Chris Bubich is an early season breakout candidate among starting pitchers after absolutely carving up the San Francisco Giants across six innings. And from my look at the pitch shapes, he's completely changed who he is as a pitcher. So why don't we dig into that, whether it's sustainable and what we can learn from a drastic year over year change like this. Let's start off by digging into how his pitch shapes have changed from 2022 to 2023. And one way to see shape changes like this is just by looking at a plot of what he's throwing year over year. Right here, you're looking at a short form movement plot of Bubich between 2022 and 2023. It's showing the vertical and horizontal movement of everything he throws. To the left of that vertical line in the center is gonna be arm side movement. And to the right is gonna be sweeper cut. And what we could do is a quick diagnostic before we dig a bit deeper into a few of these pitches. Right off the bat, his fastball, those blue dots have moved closer to the vertical line. So less arm side run on that pitch. There's also more separation between his changeup, which are the purple dots and the fastball, which are again, those blue dots. The green dots in the 2023 plot are new. That's his slider and it gives him something to work with more laterally across the zone. And the curveball, which are those red dots also look a bit different. It's kind of similar to his slider now with more downward break perhaps, as opposed to the more up down 12 six curve that he threw last year. And now we can go a bit deeper and let's start with that fastball. In Bubich's April 4th outing against the Toronto Blue Jays at home, even though it wasn't as strong of a start as his subsequent one against the Giants, he had a really good fastball shape. This is the first thing that jumped off the page to me when I saw the specs of that first outing of the season for him. For one, the pitch was up about a mile or two on velocity, which is always gonna help, velocity's king. But the key thing here is that he lost a bit of that arm side movement as I showed on that short form movement plot. It was going closer to that vertical line. It dropped about five inches of that run in arm side movement, effectively kind of making it a bit of a cut ride fastball. Generally, that means he's gonna be a little more supinated at release, so he won't be as behind the ball at release. The spin won't be as efficient, so it won't be taking off arm side as much. And I think this conceptually makes a lot of sense in the context of his repertoire because he loves to jam righties inside with that four seam fastball. And from a hitter's perspective, taking off that arm side movement, I believe will make it appear more like that pitch is staying in on the righties hands a bit longer, adduce a little bit of uh, more of weak contact, but he also releases from a really low height and gets a good amount of ride. So there's also the ability, I think, to get whiffs at the top of the zone, given how flat that ball is going to approach the plate. But this tweak was really strong. And the stuff plus on his four seamer in that April 4th outing are basically the combination of movement and velocity mixed with some basic release characteristics says that velo and bump and the loss of some arm side movement on the pitch made it go from about 19% below the average MLB fastball to 12% above the MLB average fastball. It's a huge change, especially if you believe that fastball quality is one of the biggest predictors of starting pitcher success in MLB. The new slider that Bubich is throwing is also a really strong pitch. There's a saying in the nerd baseball space that any slider above 85 miles per hour is going to be a good slider. And for the most part, Bubich is averaging about 85 on this pitch, but the key thing for him is that he's picking up nine inches of horizontal movement. So nine inches of sweep away from left-handed hitter or into a right-handed hitter as he is a lefty. And this is really strong. Maybe there's potential for this pitch to pick up another couple inches of sweep as he gets more comfortable throwing it, given this is a new pitch. But I think you also have to consider the spectrum of command to stuff here with that pitch. He's landing it in the zone a lot above, about 10% above average right now for the average MLB slider, which is really good. And the pitch is inducing a lot of whiffs, suggesting that even if it's a living in the zone, it will be a strong offering. So you'd have to consider maybe if he added a couple inches of extra horizontal movement to the pitch, whether he'd be able to command it as well. That gets into a larger point of, again, the stuff command balance of, you know, you want a breaking ball to be hard with a lot of spin induced movement, but also the harder you throw and the more spin induced movement you have, the greater the chances that you will not be able to kind of command that pitch as strong as you would. And in the case of a slider, Stuff Plus thinks this pitch is above average, about 19% better than the average breaking ball in MLB. It generated a strong amount of swing and miss in the zone, as I mentioned, and he located well in his first two outings. So the combination of Stuff and Command here looks fantastic. Sliders have become essential in baseball, I think, to survive as a starting pitcher. It felt long overdue that he would have one, and uh, this one looks really good. The changeup Bubich is throwing also seems like it was tweaked a little bit. For one, it's three miles per hour harder than it was in 2022, which is gonna be a nice advantage for the pitch. But for changeups in particular, you always wanna look at them and analyze them relative to a pitcher's primary fastball. And you're gonna wanna look at two variables there, the drop difference between the two pitches and also the velocity difference between 
the two pitches. And this is key for generating in zone swing and miss. You want a pitch that separates a lot on the drop side, but doesn't maybe necessarily separate a ton on the velocity side. So you're gonna look at a drop difference around 10 inches or anything greater than 10 inches of difference is gonna be good. Whereas anything less than say 10 inches of that velocity difference, if you combine those two variables together, you're gonna have a strong in zone width pitch. And Bubich's changeup went from eight inches of that drop separation to 11 inches of that drop separation between his fastball and changeup. Jumping again over that 10 inch hurdle I just mentioned that's gonna put changeups into a strong swing and a miss category. And the velocity gap shrunk there as well from 11 miles per hour to 10 miles per hour. So he's moving in the right direction for whiffs on both these variables. And it's no surprise that this has been his strongest swing and miss weapon so far. I know Stuff Plus doesn't really love this pitch, but he was putting it in the zone 70% of the time across his first two outings where the league average is somewhere in the low 40s for changeups. And he was generating again a ton of swing and miss on it. You could see that consistency among in zone whiffs for both his slider and his changeup. I'm pretty confident this is an above average MLB changeup based on those two variables I'm talking about. So I think I kind of disagree with Stuff Plus here. Now we talked about his velocity pretty much being up across the board, a tick or two on the fastball, three miles per hour on the changeup. He's got a new slider at 85. The curveball's up a bit too. I didn't talk too much about the curveball because I wanted to focus on the other pitches. But the other thing to point out here is that his extension down the mound has increased a lot. Last year in 2022, he was extending down the mound about six feet, six inches. This year, that's up to six feet, 11 inches. That's a five inch increase. Generally, you're gonna see, I think, extension changes start to start or even year over year in the two inch window. And that's not really too shocking for the most part, but once I think you push into the three or four inches of gained extension down the mound, I think you start to really understand that something occurred mechanically with the pitcher to change, whether it was getting into his lower half better or strength chaining or flexibility or anything. The problem here is that I'm not really a mechanical expert. I think I'm more of the guy who's gonna look at the pitch shape data and try to pull something out that's interesting. So I, you see right there, I threw up kind of the differences between 2022 and 2023. Aside from him kind of setting up on the rubber differently, he kind of goes from the stretch all the time now, as opposed to a bit of an abbreviated windup. That's the only thing that jumped out to me. I'm not a mechanical expert. If you see something in the mechanics from that, that split screen I just threw up, feel free to toss it in the comments, comments. But for the most part in this video, I'm just gonna stick to the pitch shape stuff, which I've already kind of touched on. The one thing I wanna hit on before we leave here, is that I've heard a lot of chatter on Twitter about how Bubich has not been a good pitcher in the past and therefore two starts are not going to be able to change that. And I think the one thing that misses is that we're getting pretty good information on the pitch shape side of things. Velocity, how a pitch is moving vertically and horizontally as I showed you in some of those short form movement plots at the beginning of this video. That in small samples is I think actionable information. As to whether you're always going to be spot on in calling these breakouts, I, I don't necessarily guarantee that for the most part. But I think if you want to be first on any kind of breakout, or at least earlier, at least keep an eye on a guy through his next couple starts, that the stronger tool to use is this small sample pitch shape information. I don't think by looking at prior year projections, you're gonna be able to pick out larger changes like this in a guy like Chris Bubich. There are sleepers obviously from projections all the time, guys who have large samples of success and then maybe got an injury and didn't really look too good in one year. Subsequent year, he pops back up and is really good. But a pitcher going from bad to average, or even slightly above average, and maybe the case of Bubich here, you have to look at these small sample pitch shape changes, I think, to be early on a breakout. That's actionable information for you to use in a dynasty league, a fantasy league, betting on Chris Bubich, investing in his Bowman autos. To get an exaggerated return and be ahead of the market on something, you have to act off new information that you think maybe suggests some kind of change. And we have that which, with pitch shape information like this, and as long as you can interpret it, like I hope I, I try to communicate to you in this video, we can have more confidence that he will be better than he has been in the past. Now, will he win a Cy Young this year at any point in his career? I think that's unlikely, but I think in everything we've seen with Bubich so far, and I'm making a bit of a bet here, given that at the taping of this video, we've only seen two starts of him and we're gonna have some tough matchups going forward. I want to monitor the fastball shape. I'm confident in saying that he is not the pitcher he has been in the past, he is a new pitcher. As to how good that new pitcher is, that's the question that we have to answer. But I think he goes from a below average guy to an at least an average guy, potentially an above average guy. So kudos to him for putting in the work and I hope you enjoyed this video.